All right, it looks like we still have some people coming in, but I'll go ahead and get started with some housekeeping things. For those of y'all that have already done this, thank you. Um, if you're just joining us, please go ahead and introduce yourself by typing your name and organization or school district into our chat feature. Um, we'd like to know who's joining us and who we're talking with today. So that would be great. Krista Hawkins, our, um, our, she's steering us today. Um, she's working with Oregon Dairy and Nutrition Council or ODNC. She's put a link into the chat feature, which is a pre-survey. Um, you also received a reminder email uh, probably about two hours ago or so that had the link to the pre-survey. Feel free to take that if you like. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But again, if you're just joining us and want to introduce yourselves, please type your name and organization or school district into the chat feature. Thank you. I'm seeing lots of introductions come up on screen. So that's exciting. It's exciting to have you all here today. Fantastic. Well, we have a packed agenda, so I am going to go ahead and get started. My name is Jessica Vicinski. I'm a child nutrition specialist with ODE, and I am really excited to have all of you here for this culinary presentation in a virtual space. Um, as I mentioned, this is a co-presented presentation. So it is presented by the um, Oregon, Dairy, uh, Oregon Department of Education and the Oregon Dairy and Nutrition Council. And my counterpart, Krista Hawkins from ODNC is steering us today on Zoom. So thanks to Krista. Um, she'll be posting information into the chat feature, some links and um, joining in on the conversation. We also have some child nutrition specialists that have worked, for, uh, worked with us for this presentation and should be joining in the conversation in the chat. And that is Jenny Kolpak and Chris Davison. Um, both Jenny and Chris were former school sponsors and uh, they're both culinarians in their own right. So we appreciate them um, and their help that they've provided for this presentation. So again, um, if you would like to introduce yourself, we would love if you want to um, type your name and organization or school district into our chat feature. We have quite a few people on today, so we just want to make sure that you have your computers or telephones muted. Um, and any conversation or any questions that come up, if you'll just type those into the chat, that will really help us to lower the risk of that feedback or um, conversation over one another. So we appreciate that. Before we get started, I would like to give you just a little history of how we got here. Um, ODNC and ODE have been conducting culinary trainings for, gosh, 10 or so years um, across the state. They've been in-person trainings and um, really an opportunity for connection, for us to connect with sponsors and sponsors to connect with one another, to share information, to learn new skills, to laugh, um, to talk and to eat, of course, lots of eating going on. And when 2020 happened, um, and I can definitely say 2020 happened, um, we had to cancel our in-person culinary trainings and it sort of broke my heart. Um, it was just such a great opportunity um, to be face-to-face -face with all of you in um, a relaxed and comfortable atmosphere. So as 2020 rolled around, we knew that we wanted to continue these culinary trainings in some form or fashion, no matter what. So we rolled with the punches like many of you have done throughout this time. And we created this culinary demonstration in uh, a virtual space. And so here we are now. We've taken pieces of our other culinary trainings, our traditional culinary in-person trainings, and build this culinary demonstration, this uh, culinary experience, I guess we'll call it. We are super excited that you're here to share it with us. 
but we also want to learn from you and from this presentation and grow. So your feedback is going to be super important. Um, we'll continue these demonstrations in a virtual space as um, the year goes on. And then hopefully when things go back to maybe a new kind of normal, we'll also do some in person. So um, we're excited to share with you. Please feel free to um, converse and have discussion in that chat. Um, and then of course, ask any questions. We'll have time throughout the presentation for questions. As I mentioned to some of you uh, earlier, you should have received a reminder email um, with a link to a pre-survey. The pre-survey is uh, a survey for our Healthy Schools Initiative, which is a grant that ODE has received from the CDC. And the grant is allowing ODE to connect with the sponsors, um, provide and seek out professional development opportunities, and just continue the great work that's being done to increase and improve the health and wellness of kids. And so please feel free to take that pre-survey. I know that our grant manager would appreciate it. Also on Monday, you received an email, hopefully from me, if your spam folder did not kick it out, with a participant handbook. In the handbook, you're gonna find all of the recipes that we discussed today. Also some handouts with some information that we thought would be really useful for our theme. All right, so I know you're all asking, Jessica, what's our theme? Today, I wanna to talk about flavor profiles. I wanna look at how you can take one recipe and create two or three or even four different recipes just by changing the flavor profiles. I also wanna focus on portability because I know that many of you are still doing non-congregate feeding, but even if you're not, I think in today's day and age with the need for sanitation, portability, single serve items, something that participants can hold and eat really easily, it's really important. So we're gonna discuss portability as well. So as we do that, our first recipe, is the turkey cranberry quesadilla. And you will see it if you have your packet handy on page five. The turkey cranberry quesadilla, and I will tell you, um, I don't know if y'all are old enough to remember MacGyver. Um, <laughs> it was this great show about this guy who um, could pretty much do anything with a rubber band, a paper clip, and a, and a piece of chewing gum. And so I've set up a nice little MacGyver GoPro here to try to get some close-up shots. So we'll see how it works today during the presentation. But our turkey cranberry quesadilla recipe comes from our friends at Food Hero. And if you don't know Food Hero, they are an arm of the OSU Extension Office. They do amazing work um, and they create recipes that are low budget, easy to prepare, have few ingredients, and really focus on including fruits and vegetables in our meals. They've done great recipes for families, for kids, um, even for seniors. And then they've also worked with ODE in the past to take some of their recipes and quantify them, make them uh, available for larger groups and larger serving sizes and then credit those recipes. And so this is one of those that has been quantified and credited for all child nutrition programs. So you don't have to do that work, which is fantastic. So we are gonna start with that recipe. As I said, few ingredients. I have my whole grain rich tortillas. And Krista, looks like we're looking at your email there. <laughs> I've got my whole grain rich tortillas, my spinach, turkey, dried cranberries, and some shredded mozzarella cheese. But it's 2021. And if you know me, you know I can't do anything just the same old way. And I've been thinking, what do I wanna do for this culinary training? And over the last, gosh, what have we been in? A year and a half in this pandemic, 
I have learned of so many new things that I never knew I needed to know. One of those new things is Zoom, which we're all meeting on today in this virtual space. And another one of those things is TikTok. I don't know if you've heard of TikTok. Uh, maybe your kids have heard of TikTok. I had no idea when pandemic started that a 15 to 30 second video, maybe a funny video, a silly video, sometimes seems like dangerous videos was something that I needed in my life. But after a month or two of just myself for my own company, I st started to see the appeal of it. So I'm going to take these quesadillas and we're going to try a TikTok twist. One of the videos I saw was a video that actually went viral, I believe, and it's called the TikTok tortilla hack or the TikTok quesadilla hack. And uh, it's just a, a fun, simple, well, it's a fun, we won't say simple, but it's a fun way to create a new kind of quesadilla. It's definitely portable. And so I thought, hey, let's give it a try. So we're gonna try the TikTok tortilla hack. And I'm actually calling it a four-way quesadilla. So um, to start, I've got my whole grain rich tortilla and I've made a cut in the tortilla from the base just up to the center of the tortilla. So if I hold it up, you can see it's got two cute little legs on that tortilla. And I'm gonna visual this, uh, visualize on this tortilla four quadrants. And if you have a hard time visualizing things, we've included a handout, which is really great, called Building Your Four-Way Quesadilla, which can help you to visualize our four quadrants. But we're gonna have one, two, three, and four quadrants. Now I've learned that, you know, in making these four-way quesadillas, if you have ingredients that you don't want to get as much heat, um, you can put those ingredients in one or two of your quadrants on one side of your tortilla. If you have ingredients that you want to get more heat, then you can put them in the other quadrants on the other side of your tortilla. And you're gonna see why in a second. So I'll get started. We've got our spinach leaves. I've got about a third a cup of spinach leaves, I've washed them and dried them. And because spinach leaves are so fluffy and take up so much room, I'm going to spread those out across two quadrants. So quadrants one and two, we'll call it. Spread those out. And then my second ingredient is cranberries, dried cranberries. I'm gonna take about a, a tablespoon of dried cranberries and I'm going to just spread those over my spinach leaves. Little guys wanna run away. All right, so I've got quadrants one and two or half of my tortilla filled. Now, my next ingredient is our turkey and you can do shredded or diced turkey. I've got um, a little bit of shredded here and I'm gonna put that, spread that into quadrant three of our tortilla. All right. And then finally, we have our shredded mozzarella. What's a quesadilla without cheese, right? We're gonna put about two tablespoons into quadrant four. Now our cheese in the quesadilla, that's the glue, right? That's gonna bring it all together. All right, and now we do the fold. First time doing it on camera, here we go. So you're gonna take uh, quadrant one, and because I'm right-handed, that is the lower right quadrant for me. I'm gonna take it, and you do kind of have to hold your ingredients so they don't fall out all over the place. I am gonna fold quadrant one over quadrant two. So I'm just basically folding it up, all right? And then I'm gonna hold quadrant one and two together, and then I'm gonna fold one and two over three. So folding it to the left. And then quadrant one, two, and three are gonna come down over quadrant four. All right, keeping all those good ingredients inside. And we've got a lovely little triangle quesadilla, super cute, right? So I'm gonna put that quesadilla on a prepared sheet tray which I've lined with parchment paper and sprayed lightly with cooking spray. I'm gonna bake these quesadillas 
So I preheated my oven to 350. In fact, I want to make sure that that is done. And I'm going to put that on my sheet tray. So there's one quesadilla done. Now, of course, in the real world, we would just go through with all our ingredients, finish up our quesadillas, and put them in the oven. But it's the virtual world, and we're talking about flavor profiles. So I want to talk about different recipes. But before we do that, I am going to throw it to Krista, who's going to try to launch a poll for us. Krista, can you launch that grab and go poll? Sure, here we go. This is a very fun quiz. And we'll give you a couple of minutes to look. And it's, um, it says rock melon is, a pop is popular in Australia and New Zealand. In the US, this is known as watermelon, pumpkin, honeydew, cantaloupe, or butternut squash. So we'll give you about another 20 seconds. Just again, this is just a fun little quiz. I see we're all across the board with watermelon. People think it's, everyone gets some votes in this one. And I think we'll end the polling right now. Um, and the correct answer is cantaloupe. Nice. Mm -hmm. and that's 31%. Awesome. Great we job. All, we all learn something. <laughs> and I think people can people see the, the results? I think you need to share them. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Thank so you, everyone. That was kind of fun. Hope you learned a little tidbit there. Definitely. Thanks. Back to you, Jessica. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so for our different flavor profiles, we've included three different recipes in your handout packet. The first one we're going to start with, it's called the Bon Mi Quesadilla. Now, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about flavor profiles. What are they exactly? Well, we know that for flavors, we can taste sweet, and sour, and salty, bitter, and umami, or earthiness. So those are all flavors that we can taste. A flavor profile is just the combination of flavors that you experience when you taste something. Easy as that. But more than that, there are regions across the world that use certain ingredients consistently. And those ingredients have a certain flavor profile. And so we start to associate that flavor profile with that region. So for our banh mi quesadilla, a banh mi sandwich is traditionally known as a, a Korean dish. Um, it's got some great flavors. We have some sweet and uh, sourness from some pickled vegetables. And then we'll have some saltiness from shredded pork. Um, and then of course, we've got our ooey gooey cheese. So we did include a quick pickle veggie recipe with the banh mi quesadilla recipe. And you can actually quick pickle any kind of vegetable. But for this recipe, we wanna include vegetables that have a crunchy texture because I think it will be a really good contrast to that, the softness of the cheese and the pork. So I've actually quick pickled some carrots and radish, and I added a little bit of cucumber to that. So I'm gonna take my quick pickled veggies, about a fourth a cup, and I'm gonna spread them over quadrants one and two. I want them to get a little bit less of the heat in the oven. So I'll go ahead and spread them on those two quadrants. Give them some nice space. Really adds a lot of great texture to this quesadilla. And then to quadrant three, I'm gonna add about an ounce of the shredded pork. Now, if you are a school district or a CACFP sponsor that uses USDA foods or commodities, and you happen to order the uh, shredded pork from USDA Foods, this is a fantastic recipe for that pork. So we'll put that in quadrant three. And then in quadrant four, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of shredded mozzarella. All right. Now, 
A banh mi sandwich does not traditionally have cheese, but a quesadilla does. And so we're gonna go with it, right? We're gonna call this a little bit of fusion. All right, so we have our quarter cup of cheese to make it nice and ooey gooey. And we're gonna try this fold again. Here we go. I'm gonna go quadrant one over quadrant two, trying to hold in those veggies. See if I can get to the camera, there we go. And I'm gonna go one and two over three. And then one, two and three. Woo. The pressure, the pressure of keeping the veggies in. Over four. All right, Woo. and that's a nice packed one. So we'll go ahead, that guy got out of there. We'll go ahead and put that on our sheet tray. And do you have to do the four-way fold? No, you don't. You can do a traditional quesadilla fold, the half moon fold over, absolutely. But I wanted to try something kind of fun and just see how it worked. And so that is our banh mi quesadilla. The next quesadilla I want us to look at is, that's my oven, my, it's a Mediterranean quesadilla. And so Mediterranean, some of my favorite flavors, you get some saltiness from feta cheese and then a little bit of tang, tangy earthiness from spinach, some sweet red bell pepper. And then we've got some great hummus that lends nuttiness and of course that smooth texture. So we're gonna do the Mediterranean quesadilla. And in your packets, I've also included a Food Hero, thanks again, Food Hero, recipe for hummus. They've got some great recipes uh, for snacks, for hummus, for some different things that you can try. So you can utilize that, it's been credited. You can put it in your uh, quesadilla. So we again have our tortilla and we've cut up to the center so that we'll have our four quadrants. I have spinach again. Um, so actually I'm gonna start, I take that back. I'm gonna start with the hummus. I'm gonna put the hummus into quadrant one. I have about a fourth a cup of hummus. So I'm gonna spread that into quadrant one. And then I'm gonna put my spinach in quadrant two. And I will lay that out into quadrant two. Hoping all of you can see this with my little MacGyver thing. And again, I think it's about a third a cup spinach. And then I've got red bell pepper, which I've cut into strips. If you've been to any of our culinary trainings, you have probably learned our super um, trick for cutting a bell pepper without getting all of those pesky little seeds all over the cutting board. Um, we will include a link to a video of that trick uh, in a follow-up email to all of you. So you'll be able to watch it. It was actually a video that was um, recorded by my predecessor, Chef Garrett. Some of you may have uh, known him or worked with him, fantastic. And to quadrant four, we're gonna add a mixture, ooh, look at all that delicious cheese, of the feta, which I talked about, that salty feta. And then I am going to add two tablespoons of mozzarella because mozzarella just melts so well. <laughs> so this is where the fold is going to get fun. We've got our hummus and we're going to go over to quadrant two. So we've got quadrant one over quadrant two and then over quadrant three. I'm going to be saying this in my dreams tonight. And then one, two, and three are going to be over. Ooh, and this is going to be a packed one. Quadrant four, some of my cheese is trying to fall out. So I'm gonna put that onto my sheet tray and we'll move on to our last quesadilla. Before we do that, I just wanna check in with Krista. How's the conversation going in the chat, Krista? Any questions? I think everyone is watching you. No questions right now, just some wonderful comments about Food Hero and people learning things today. Oh, good, fantastic. Well, we like it when we learn, so. We can appreciate that. All right, so our last flavor profile. 
is going to be what I'm calling, and I don't know if it's actually a flavor profile, but I'm calling it the American breakfast flavor profile, right? Um, we don't want to forget about breakfast. I know that many of you are serving your participants breakfast, and I appreciate that because research shows that breakfast is important. It helps kids, not only kids, but adults helps us to focus and learn, be prepared for the day. Um, breakfast in schools and in childcare centers um, is, is really important meal to, to kickstart um, a kid's education and success. Um, and so we wanted to include an option in our quesadilla exploration for breakfast. Um, when I think of American breakfast, I think of eggs, cheesy eggs maybe, maybe bacon or sausage. And so this quesadilla has that. Um, again, I've got my tortilla. And if you do get uh, USDA foods or maybe you work with a distributor that can provide those pre-cooked egg patties and sausage patties, then this recipe is gonna be a breeze. If not, you've got one extra step, it's not a hard step. You'll just be cooking some eggs um, and some sausage, which I've gone ahead and done. I've pre-cooked, scrambled some eggs. And I'm using um, the equivalent of about half a large egg. And then I also have some sausage. So I'm going to put my egg very gingerly into quadrant one. Make sure I get that in there. Gosh, whoever does the dishes today is gonna to have a heck of a job. Yeah, oh, that's me. All right, and then in quadrant two, I'm from Texas. Texans love to have a little salsa with their eggs, so I'm gonna add some salsa. And um, the salsa actually adds a great bit of flavor. It's got that acidity or sourness from the tomatoes, maybe a little bite if you like a hot salsa from the peppers. So I'm gonna add, we'll say like about two tablespoons, but you choose. This is not the, the um, salsa doesn't really affect the crediting. So you choose how much you want. All right, we'll put that into quadrant two. And then in quadrant three, we're gonna put our sausage. And they didn't have sausage patties today. So I had to take some links and we've just cut those links in half. But this is child nutrition and we make it work, don't we? So we're gonna do that. All right. And then of course, our favorite quadrant four, we've got some cheese, some shredded cheddar. About two tablespoons we'll put into quadrant four. <laughs> and this is where it gets kind of fun. So this is our, this is our tasty quesadilla, but it's our messiest quesadilla. So I am gonna fold quadrant one over quadrant two. Stinky little thing. Quadrant one and two, here we go, salsa, over three. And quadrant one, two, and three over four. But you know what? A little mess just makes it all the more delicious. So there we go. Oops, there we go. We've got our quesadilla. We'll put that on our tray. Move this out of the way. So we have our four quesadilla recipes. We have one quesadilla recipe, which we've actually uh, changed with four different flavor profiles and uh, one TikTok sensation. So there we have them. And to bake these, you actually want to lightly spray the tops of them with some of that cooking spray. And we'll put it in the oven at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes. Really, you just want to make sure that the cheese melts and that tortillas get a little brown. So we'll put that in there. I found that with this piece of your fold, if you check it about halfway through and push them down a little bit, it will help in helping them mold, meld together. Um, do you have to, oh, sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to put my thumb on that. Do you have to bake these in the oven? Absolutely not. If you are serving a smaller group um, and you have a skillet or 
a larger group and you have a, a large tilt skillet, you can definitely cook your quesadillas in a skillet. Just spray the skillet with a little cooking spray or add just a little touch of oil. You'll put the quesadillas in on one side, flip them, and just making sure that that cheese melts and that the, the quesadilla or the tortilla is nice and browned. All right. So Krista, how about another poll? Okay, let's, here's another fun poll. Um, let's see, let me go to, I'm gonna launch this. This is our second poll and a fun quiz actually. In the United Kingdom, when your recipe calls for one cup chopped coriander leaves, you should use parsley, basil, cilantro, mint, or sage. Oh, that's a tough one. Okay, so far cilantro is in the lead. We have parsley, basil, and sage, and mint. Okay. Little love for everybody. Little love for everyone. Yep. <laughs> I must say, I learned when I took when I was writing writing these into the poll. I learned from them. Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. Who's still in there? I think almost everybody's had a chance to vote. I'm going to end it in about one second. And. There we go. Cilantro came in as the winner and that is the correct answer. So congratulations, everyone. Great job, everybody. Thank you for participating and kind of fun to learn some new things. We've got some Smarties. Very nice. Before we move on to the next recipe I wanna show you, I would like to talk a little bit about a handout we have in your packet, Jenny Colpack has created a handout called Completing the Meal. She's gone ahead and selected vegetable and fruit component recipes and included those recipes and then suggested some condiments that could go with the meal. All of that is in your packet. So thank you, Jenny, this is fantastic. Very easy to read and create a delicious meal based on the flavor profiles. So the next recipe I want to demonstrate for you as we move forward is the sweet carrot muffins. And it's actually in your handout as sweet carrot bread or muffins. Another food hero recipe. These are so great. We love them. I'm doing muffins because what do you think of when you think portable muffins? It's a go-to. Um, this recipe is super easy. Um, and you can actually make it ahead and freeze them and then defrost as needed. So you can make a huge batch, freeze and serve when you need to. So really great option. It's great for breakfast, but also maybe for snack. And again, it has been credited for child nutrition programs. So we are gonna talk a little bit about that right now. The best part of this recipe and the part that kind of made, made me go, huh, what are you talking about? This recipe includes canned sliced carrots. I kid you not. Not something you often see in a muffin or carrot muffin recipe. But you want to make sure that you rinse your uh, sliced canned carrots and dry them a little bit. And then you're gonna mash them or puree them. And I've gone ahead and given these a quick buzz in the food processor so they're nice and pureed. I am going to add, I'm actually gonna take this one, add my pureed carrots to a bowl. And to that, I'm gonna add the sugar. So we've got brown sugar which gives it a nice warm flavor because of the molasses in there. And then I am also going to add our egg, which is one egg beaten and our milk, a cup of milk. All right, so we're gonna add that all into a bowl. Super easy. I'm gonna take a whisk and make sure that that is all mixed together. 
We want to make sure it's incorporated well. Set that aside. And once we make these, we're going to talk a little bit about our theme flavor profiles and how we can change the flavor of these to create new and exciting recipes. So we've mixed that all together. To that, I'm going to add um, whole grain rich baking mix. Baking mix is great in this recipe because it has your flour, your raising agent, some salt, all in the mix. And so you don't have to measure additional ingredients or measure all of those things separately. It's all there for you. So we are gonna add two cups of the baking mix to our carrot mixture. And I'm not gonna add it all. I'm actually gonna reserve, I'm skilled enough to do this. Um, I'm gonna reserve about two tablespoons of the flour. I'm gonna set that aside and I'll tell you why in a minute. So I am gonna mix that together. And you want to mix the flour in just until it's incorporated. You don't want to over mix it. I forgot one of my fantastic ingredients, my cinnamon. Let me put that in there. Look at that, we're all human. So I'm gonna mix that. So lumps are fine, just as long as we are not seeing any of the dry ingredient left over, okay? So a few lumps, no problem. All right, now, this recipe has an option to include raisins and I am gonna do that. And so that's where my uh, dried baking mix, my leftover baking mix comes in. So I am going to put my raisins into the baking mix and I'm just gonna mix that around a little bit so that my raisins are coated. The reason I'm doing this is because it will actually stop the raisins from sinking to the bottom of the muffins when it bakes. I don't know if you've ever baked a cake or uh, muffins or bread and put maybe some fruit, dried fruit especially in, and you take it out of the oven and the only dried fruit you have is at the bottom. So this actually helps to suspend the fruit in the batter as it bakes and they don't sink. So we're gonna add those to our batter and we're gonna make sure we mix that in. Oops, I'm gonna make a mess. What's cooking if you don't make a mess? And we'll make sure we get those nice and incorporated. And there we have our batter. Delicious. Now, I mentioned that we're gonna make muffins out of this. So I have a muffin pan ready to go. And I have added some muffin liners to half of this pan. Um, you don't have to add muffin liners. It's just, you know, if you have them and wanna use them, great. If not, that's okay. But what you do wanna do, no matter what, is lightly spray your pan or your liners with cooking spray. Not a heavy spray, just really lightly. And then you're gonna take a quarter cup or a number 16 scoop, and we're going to put a heaping quarter cup, or heaping number 16 scoop, into each of our ooh, muffin cups. And you wanna judge it, you might have a different um, muffin tin, and maybe, maybe a heaping quarter cup is a little too much. These muffins, they didn't rise super significantly, so don't be afraid to fill them almost to the top. Not at the top, we want a little bit of space, but almost, all right? And so, I just wanna make sure you get all that good batter, some raisins into your cups. So we will just continue this until it's completely full. I'm gonna actually set this aside though. When you're done, you're gonna bake these at 350 for about 18 to 20 minutes or until a toothpick or a small knife inserted in the center comes out clean. It could take longer depending on your oven. It could take less. If you're using a convection oven, it'll probably take less. Right? 
So you be the judge, but a toothpick or knife should come out clean. So with the, <laughs> the power of Wonka vision, we're gonna show what our finished muffins look like. So hopefully you can see that on the camera. So these are our finished sweet carrot muffins. Delicious, portable, fantastic. Now, how do we change up the flavor profile of the muffins? It's actually super easy. You're just going to switch out the canned carrots and maybe even the cinnamon for a different pureed fruit or vegetable and maybe a different spice. So I've done two different variations that I wanna show you. I have done a pumpkin, and I'll do this. I have done a pumpkin muffin. So I used canned pumpkin puree and I added pumpkin pie spice. I did include the alternatives in the handout packet so that you'll see that. This maybe is a nice little fall muffin. And then these beauties, can you guess? If you have the packet, you probably already know. Can you guess what makes these this gorgeous pink color? And when you do this, don't be afraid to think outside the box. Canned beets, believe it or not, canned beets. So I used canned sliced beets. And then instead of cinnamon, I added ginger, which is really a nice compliment to the canned beets. And I think these are pretty cute. They taste delicious. If you're thinking, ah, beets, I don't know what that would taste like. It tastes fantastic. And I think it'd be perfect for Valentine's Day or, or something like that. So something fun to give your participants. Get them to try something new. Lots of fun. All right, Krista, what you got for us? How's the conversation going? Well, there's some great conversation. Thank you, everyone, for sharing about the different baking mix ideas. Why don't we go to our next um, fun quiz or poll? Absolutely. And um, well, technology, I did not do that correctly. You can do it, Krista. I, I hit the wrong, I hit edit. Um, okay, so here we are. I'm gonna launch it right now. In South Africa, be sure to refer to which vegetable as a Corget, cor, I don't know the, how to pronounce that, but um, I'll let everybody keep putting their answers in for either carrot, zucchini, parsnip, sweet potato, or eggplant. Mm -hmm. And obviously I learned something with this because I couldn't even pronounce it. So. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay, and everyone's getting some love on this one too. So thank you everyone for, um, participating in this. How about one or two more, just a couple more seconds and we'll close up this. Jessica, I just have to say those muffins all together look beautiful, all the different colors. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling and share the results. Uh, sweet potato was the winner and the actual answer is zucchini. Oh my goodness, who would have thunk? Who would have thunk it? So yes, and I just want to thank Jenny Kolpak because she's the one who created all these fun polls and thank you for um, being so creative and- Absolutely, thanks Jenny. And us learn new things. And, and I just love the conversation in the chat box about the different baking mix ideas. So thank you everyone, just chime in. And if there are ideas of what you think your students would like, pop those ideas into the chat box as well. Um, the muffins are, uh, some. Carol Walsh just said, yes, the muffins do look beautiful, exclamation mark. Awesome, fantastic. Well, I just wanted to show you, I pulled out our quesadillas. So we've got our four quesadillas cooked and ready to go. I believe before I move on to talk a little bit about the other things in our handout packet, Krista, you might have one more poll for us. Or you might not. <laughs> I think what we want to think about is what kind, oh, there we go. What kind of grab and go packaging would you use for your four way quesadilla? So you've got something portable. If you're doing grab and go, 
what are you going to put it in? Are you going to package it by itself? Are you going to package it with the other components to make a reimbursable meal? What would y'all do? And there we go. We've got our ooey gooey quesadillas. And that cheese is coming out. I can see it now. Pretty tasty though. Let's see what people pick. Making me hungry, Jessica. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it all looks so delicious. Okay, how about another, just another couple of seconds for the poll. Um, every, the only one that doesn't have any love is plastic deli bag right at this point. So let's see if anybody last. Okay, I'm going to, and oh, okay, somebody just gave some love to that. <laughs> Okay, so we've got about 74% of you. Thank you all for participating. I'm going to end this now and share the results with you. All right. Looks like foil wrap sheet. Mm -hmm. Won the day. And that, fantastic. But yes, um, I do have a lot of eating to do for this one. <laughs> I wish all of y'all could be here to help me out. And maybe in time, we will all be together to give it a try. Um, before we end today, I do want to um, give you a little bit more information about the handouts that we included in your packet. We thought some of these handouts would be really useful. Um, we've got three handouts. Well, we've got two on the importance of meals like breakfast and lunch, particularly in schools. But we know that, you know, learning starts even when they're in childcare, even when they're at Head Start. Um, and so these meals are really important. Um, so we've added some nice handouts about that with some data and information that you can share with administrators, community members that ask, you know, why are you serving child nutrition meals? What are you serving? What's the importance? We know the importance. We want to share it with them so that they know the importance. We also included some great facts about flavored milk, chocolate in particular, some of our participants' favorites, right? We all know that. But we also included some easy flavored water options. So water is supposed to be served throughout the day. We want to make sure that kiddos um, have the, their access to water, but don't always have to make it plain water. Maybe one day you mix it up and, and do something kind of fun. Um, so we've got some of those in there. You can try some of these at home too. You don't have to do it just in your centers or your schools. We've also included some suggested herbs and spices for your vegetables. Um, if you want to change the flavor profile of the vegetables you're doing, these are great. Um, it's a huge list and I will be absolutely honest and tell you that I stole this beautiful handout from Washington State. They did a great job with it. So that's in there for you. And one of our absolute favorite, favorite handouts is our basics at a glance handout. There it is, there's the front of it. This will go through measurements, scoop sizes, everything you need to know to do what you need to do every day in the kitchen. So that's one of our favorite. But you know, we don't wanna just, you don't wanna just take my word for it that these are great recipes. We don't wanna just say they're great recipes. We wanna make sure that we share with our participants, maybe get their input. And I know many of you do that through sampling and taste testing. So we've also included a little sampling sheet um, from Food Hero. It's great it's for kids of all ages um, and just lets them select a happy face, a sad face, or maybe like a more neutral face on whether they like it or not. So always great to get input um, from your participants and your crowd so that you know really what they like and don't like, and you can continue to serve those things. So that is what we have for you today. Um, I wanna thank you all so very much uh, for being on this, um, we'll call it culinary demonstration, exploration, 
flavor, sensation, all of the Asians. <laughs> We've really enjoyed having you here. Um, hopefully you had great conversation, um, maybe you learned something new, had a little bit of fun, maybe had a laugh or two. Um, as I said, that handout packet has everything you need that we talked about today. Those recipe resources, those handout resources, and we hope that maybe you'll give them a try. As I mentioned, you don't have to do the four-way fold. You can do the traditional quesadilla fold, but hey, maybe try the four-way fold at home. See how it goes. I think you'll like it. It's kind of fun. And then you can tell you know, your younger participants, hey, I know TikTok. I'm cool. I, I, I know. I'm down with it. And then they'll just roll their eyes at you because I'm sure something new has popped up in the meantime, right? Um, we will send out a follow-up email to all of you with links and information that we want to share. Also, we're going to send you a post survey um, because we, as I said, want to get your feedback. Did you like it? What can we do to improve? How can we make the next one even better than this one? But until then, I'm going to pass it once again to Krista, see how the conversation's going, and if there are any last questions um, that we want to talk about. Yes. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Fantastic. And I'm, I'm really famished right now after looking at all those foods. I just wanted to remind people to look into the chat box. There are links to the post survey. You did the pre-survey. So if you can please do the post survey, that again will really help um, the CDC Oregon Healthy Schools grant um, to show what kinds of value these trainings do as far as professional development for um, uh, child nutrition professionals, um, because we know this is valuable. Um, we're also putting in information about the um, different links and you'll receive these links as well in a follow-up email. Um, the links to Food Hero, the links to the whole school, whole um, community, whole child um, WISC or WISC model. And that's the framework of wellness that child nutrition is a part of in so many ways. Um, you know, child nutrition not only nourishes kids, but we provide that touch point of social emotional connection. We provide um, staff wellness opportunities for when people eat school meals, um, they're eating a healthy meal to keep themselves healthy. Um, we are, so there are lots and lots of resources again in the chat box, and we really appreciate you taking the pre and post surveys. In addition to that, you'll receive an email that will have an actual um, evaluation, as Jenna, Jessica mentioned, that will really help us um, inform our next one. Our, our goal is to have um, maybe two more of these over the course of the year, um, and we love your ideas, and, um, and we want to meet the needs of what you and your organization have. So we'll also, as we said, we, we recorded this, so we will send the link. So please share it with your colleagues. It will be posted as well. So um, um, please just um, let us know if there's anything we can do to help your programs and make your work easier. And we just thank you all so much for all you're doing to nourish Oregon's kids um, of all ages in all your programs. Absolutely. I'm seeing fantastic information in the chat. Thank you to all of you. Um, Again, we're super excited to, to be able to do these culinary trainings again. They are fun. I love them. They are a highlight in the work that I do. And being able to connect with all of you is truly a highlight. So thank you to Krista and the Dairy Council, Chris and Jenny. Thank you to both of you for continuing the conversation. Well, and we're seeing some great comments in the chat box um, the, about, um, let me just see here. Um, let's see, we enjoyed your varieties. We're all a little cooler today after taking this training. Great job, Jessica. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's see, our kids love to make breakfast all day long. Love it. Really love your style in the kitchen and love of changing it up with the great recipes. It was fun training, looking forward to more. Nice. And um, thank you everyone for all these engaging in the conversations in the chat box and taking all the polls. Yeah. Um, and just thank you for participating. You'll get the evaluation. And um, I, um, 
we have information that, um, again, this will be recorded and, and posted for you. So thank you so much. Well, we hope to see you next time. Everybody have a great afternoon. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.